Hello, lovely, cherished, and wonderful viewers. Welcome to another exciting episode of The Daily Trend, your favorite TV show. My name is Sandra Smith Ansa, and I am your main host for today. Today's topic is very crucial, very pertinent, and very important. What you have to do for me is to just stay tuned. You'll get to know what it is after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you very much for staying tuned. As I said earlier, today's topic is very vital and very crucial. But I am not doing this alone. I am on the show with two wonderful men I'm hosting the show with. And on my left, we have... I'm um, Ernest Kweku Adu. And on my right... Jerry Martinez at Yobe. Thank you very much. Today's topic, we are going to discuss what we call gender equality and gender inequality. When we say gender, we know masculine, feminine, male, female. So when we say gender inequality or gender, okay, let's tackle gender equality first. When we say gender equality, Mr. Jerry, what do you think about it? Now, uh, when you were making an explanation, you spoke earlier about having male and female, but in our dispensation right now, we have homosexuals, which is equally considered as a gender. Yeah. So to simply put gender equality, is about apportioning a benefit or merit to a particular person, irregardless of the person's gender or sexual orientation. That is what we can term as gender equality. Yeah. Okay, what other idea do you have, Mr. Ernest? Okay, thank you, Sandra. I would say, according to UNICEF, they consider gender equality as giving equal opportunities to both boys and girls, women and men, regardless of who they are. So if there are opportunities that must be given in the course of sharing of resources, in the case of protection and other aspects, it must be given to them equally without any discrimination. It must be given to them equally. So, If I can add, one additional thing we can talk under danger, uh, gender equality is if you look at the aspirations of the person, the needs of the person, okay. and the value that particular person possesses. Thank you very much for joining us and you are welcome back from the break. If you are just joining us, you are not too late. We are discussing gender equality and inequality. We discuss gender disparities in the family, home, school, the churches and everywhere. Right now we are moving to gender conflict. We know that this gender disparities in the home, in the workplace, it brings about gender conflict. Let's take a situation whereby we are in the house and then, as we said earlier, the ladies are not meant to work. The men are meant to do all the work. So this brings a little conflict between the children because they, they tend to hate their sisters. Any smart is so you don't do anything, you're just in the house. So it brings a little bit of conflict. So can we say that is what brings the conflict and what can we say about gender conflict, actually? Okay, before we even get to that, I want to talk about, I mean, uh, gender issues in schools as well. Okay. You know, in my senior high school, I was a, it was a boys' school, so yeah. when it says boys prefer, it's for everybody. Yeah. But I also got to understand that even in mixed school, it's like boys preferred is for the whole school, yes. but yeah. girls, girls preferred prefer is for only for girls. girls. So <laughs> that is one thing we can also look at. Yeah. And sometimes, whether we like it or not, men are, or in society, or I mean, as growing up, we got to understand or we believe that men are always strong. Yeah. So because of that strength alone, we have been given certain positions or certain authority to undertake certain functions. Yeah. That is why we can say boys, I mean, boys preferred is for the whole school and then girls preferred. And in terms of workplaces to harassment, yeah. it's very prone, I mean, to women than yeah. men. Yeah. Or perhaps even if it happens to men, we barely voice it out because of the general understanding that we are strong. Yeah. So. That is one of the things we can talk about. And now when we talk about equality, inequality, because whether something is good or not, there will be someone or someone who will also not like that good thing because we are all born with different traits. Yeah. So the conflict, we can talk, for example, about equal treatment okay. in the house, at workplaces, in schools, and even churches. Now when we say equal treatment, it's not necessarily, this is where equity and equality can also play in. Yeah. When we were requesting for equal treatment, let's say, for example, uh, an adolescent boy or girl is growing up. The boy is likely not to be given much attention to because one, he doesn't menstruate. Yeah. He probably wouldn't get pregnant. Yeah. The very highest thing is him committing a crime or any or getting another person pregnant. So when the attention is given more to the lady in that particular aspect than the man or the boy, there will be a conflict because the brother will say, My mom or my dad likes my sister more than he or exactly. she likes me and all that. But I think the understanding too needs to be put across yeah. that. Just because I'm a boy doesn't mean I don't know. I don't need to know about what menstrual cycle is. Yes. I also don't need to know about. I mean, having to 
uh, get pregnant, what are the consequences of that? So, yeah, equal treatment is one of the conflicts. And uh, when you were talking about the school um, okay. disparities, I remember normally the boys are made to weed, girls are made to collect Sweet. the weeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the weeds in the boys should weed when they finish weeding, then we the ladies will pack the weeds and go and throw it away. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and upon that, they still give if it is maybe there's an attempt <laughs> after the work, they still give it to the ladies to take yes. charge of it. But <laughs> we are the ones who do that. Okay, the so Mr. what can you also say about it? gender conflict I, mean, I think the gender conflict talks about who does what and who doesn't do what okay. mm -hmm. if there is a situation right now you see women are for now the focus is on women okay. meanwhile the, the men are also being uh, i mean more treated in a way which was inequality in a way but now our focus is mainly on women because women are considered as what well vulnerable and then they, uh, i yeah. prefer to use the word yes. soft i mean soft. <laughs> <Not vulnerable. laughs> no, if you say soft it's, it's like the no when soft, they say something is soft or hard <laughs> it has a means not just one particular yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a so the, the focus the focus is always on the uh, ladies uh, on women ladies. when when in back in the schools again when a guy beats a lady mm -hmm. it's a problem but if a, a, a lady beats a guy, yeah. we need to forgive him and she's a lady. <laughs> she's a lady. Yeah, that, but that guy that beating the lady true. can be giving 20 lashes at the expense of, of the girl. <laughs> now when you come to our societies, you know, it's not always we creating the problem. But society itself is creating it. Come to our governance system. Okay. Take our legislature, for instance. Yeah. Go to our parliaments. Yeah. We have about... In some countries, about 700 and say, 200 and something members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But how many women are that in the is. parliament? Is it because they are women? But it's, it, it's done by we, the same society, who go there to elect them. Sure. Go to some of the countries, they have less than 10% of women representation A in parliament. A very cool example is Jordan. They have 15 out of 275 seats. Yes. In women. Parliament. You yes. see, and this comes to Ghana, our, uh, Ghana, who is our, our neighboring country yeah. over here. They have less than 30% of women representation. But thanks to the same legislature who are fighting for what we call the uh, Affirmative Action Bill, okay. which seeks to give some kind of quota to women in what gov uh, gov governance. Yeah. So for instance, 40% they are fighting for 40% of position okay. in governmental organizations to be given to women. That, we are that making ways. That would be an equity. If yes. <laughs> in some countries, in, a, in some countries, women are not given high positions. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God, recently, in recent times, Liberia was able to break the status yeah. quo by electing a uh, female president. president. Oh, I think countries, Malawi had a similar thing, Joyce Banda. Yes. Okay. Countries are select, uh, selecting their chief justices to be women. Yeah, South are, Africa. Uh, Ghana, for instance, the attorney general is a lady, yeah. the chief justice. So you can see that everybody is fighting for, for yeah, equality. equality. Yeah. For see? women. Yeah, for, for women. Because women are those that suffer most when we are talking about these inequalities. And it's surprising because... You look at UK, this is 2006, only 35% of their population were, um, women were employed. Okay, Those who yeah, are employed in the country. Rate, and uh, in Denmark, as of 2008, only 24, the employees were, were women. And like this type of conflict, when you check inside a marriage, I'm married, a case study like this, maybe I'm married, I'm working, my husband is working, now we have children, they are finding difficult. The first thing the husband is, will say is to tell me to quit my job. And sit in the house and take care of the children. <laughs> why can't he also quit his job? In this case, the this. couple are not fighting. The agenda yes. is like because yes. the woman will say, No, me to have a career, I have something I have to build. The same as you. So he why should I quit and he said you have house? to be careful? <laughs> as much as we are fighting for equality, equality. we shouldn't <laughs> mis miscalculate it. We shouldn't put it in a way that some, there are some things that you cannot take the fact it's away natural, that it's natural. it's natural. So it's natural, it's natural that men and women are not equal. And this is bringing no, a problem. No, this is bringing angle. a problem. This fight that we are fighting right now has brought a lot of feminist groups. Hmm. Yo, yeah, yeah, to yeah, Ghana, yeah. There, there is a group called Pepe Dem. <laughs> Pepe Dem is made up of uh, women <laughs> okay. who think that we are married, we are all equal. So a, a lady must not even wash the husband's clothes. A lady yeah. must not cook for the husband to eat because we are all equal. And these are groups that I imagine if you don't take care, in some years to come, it will be chaotic. I think the notion about equality is something that people people under understand or underrate because yes. it's just about when we take uh, inequality, for example, 
we were saying something about humility. The Bible says you should be humble as a, I mean, as a woman. It doesn't mean you shouldn't voice things out, but sometimes how you voice it out. Now, in his situation, for example, if you're a woman and you are doing the same, you are on the same level of employment, that doesn't mean your domestic work has stopped. No. Because if that were the case, maybe we should have swapped, men will now become pregnant and women will no longer be pregnant. There are certain we call biological or psychological laws in nature that you cannot change, whether you're a man or a woman. A woman, bear, a woman bearing children has never stopped, yes. whether you earn the same salary as your husband or not. The man taking charge or feeding the whole family has never stopped, whether oh. he's taking more than you or equal as you. But it comes to the place, instead of washing your husband's clothes, let's say, for example, you are supposed to cook. There are certain men who equally cook for their yes. wives or even but, for the family. But when it comes to situations like they don't present that part of it. So there's lack of objectivity in that angle. If you cook for your husband, you all work, maybe you all have a six hour, eight hour work, you all come back at the same time. And then maybe you, you come home early, the husband comes home early and decide to cook something. I know there are situations where certain men also have the perception that it is a woman's job. So even if they can help or they can do that, they wouldn't want to do. So in that case, we can have like a separate cases on, I mean, those individual situations. But in a more generality, it is always a woman's work, as I believe, to nurture the home. But it's a man's job to provide security and survival for the home, irrespective of equality, equal pay or whatever. So we need but to understand the basics of that. Aspect of all this. When these feminist groups are imagined fighting for women to be given equal opportunities, none of them has ever said that, oh, allow the women also to start proposing to the men. Allow the women also to start <laughs> paying the dowry yeah, of, of men. See, that's why we say there are certain natural things. Yes, none of them is fighting they for They are cultural women. norms. If, you it can goes their way, if it goes their way, oh, they are okay with cool. it. If it doesn't go their yeah, way. Yeah, but yeah, one yeah. key thing I will congratulate the women or the feminists about is the gender especially against sure. women and maltreatment yeah. because in certain countries women work more by the end less yes so there's also this fight for equal pay or sometimes even equal access because if you don't have access to a particular uh, territory or job or opportunity it means you are being considered as maybe someone who's an illiterate or maybe an unemployed person and if it is going little by little like that we are drawing back so even though the fight is coming, I watched a documentary on, from BBC uh, yesterday about a woman who was creating a, a fight group for women in terms of violence, teaching women how to fight back in case there's an abuse or an attack on them yeah, in terms of rape and themselves. those other things. But when she started initially, I think she started in 2012, okay. two years into the project, she was shunned by a lot of I mean, media houses, a lot of organizations. But as I'm talking to you right now, she has about 12 hours from wow. people and then maybe it could also good when you get criticism from certain things because yeah. you might be doing the right thing if sometimes the approach you use can be i mean wow. bad yeah. so i believe that probably she had revised a way of going around it okay even though you want to defend yourself it's not always i have to i mean attack people necessarily to to do that so okay so thank you very much how do we think we can actually solve this problem of gender disparity conflict what are some of the remedies we can come up with so that this issue can be a thing of the past? I think uh, on part of governments, okay. there must be laws that must protect le the less privileged. Okay. In this case, we are talking about women. So there must be laws, <laughs> yeah, there must be laws that <laughs> must protect women, as some countries are doing. They are trying to protect the interest of the women. women. So women can also be given higher positions and all that. Now, when you come to the family, okay. orientation must be given to parents. You must have total orientation and what education. Mm -hmm. That when you have two kids, a male and a female, you must try to what, treat them equally because you don't know which of them is going to be your saver tomorrow. So education must be everywhere. You see, we are or uh, fortunate because we are in a, an urban setting. Go to the villages where these issues are not being spread. Mm -hmm. People don't know about it. You go to the villages, you see a man and a woman coming back from farm, the woman being pregnant, yeah. carrying, and carrying a child at the back, and then carrying loads, loads again, there. and the man is just holding his cutlass, cutlass. and working. Because <laughs> there's no education, they don't know. And we must also try, our opinion leaders, the chiefs, okay. must also try to play a role in it. Because in some setting, it is still a taboo for a woman to try and do certain things. A woman cannot say, it's up till now, a woman cannot say, women cannot say they want to go to school in some, yeah. in some settings. So the education must keep going so that uh, we'll be able to help the UN and others to achieve 
the, 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 the fit SDG that we are all fighting I for. think talking about that, they also have to be, especially the men, most of them, they don't want female children. Mm. When they are, that's why people would tend to take other wives and then when they mm. think that the male children will continue their lineage, so they don't want the female. I was, I was watching a movie, a movie yesterday and then because a lady gave birth to a child, the man left the hospital, he didn't even go and look at the baby's face. It was actually a oh. female. Yeah, a female. because she gave birth to a female and then she got pregnant again and was, they went for the scan, it was a female. The man said then they should remove the baby because he doesn't want so to see from the home. Right. 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 So you can imagine when, the time the woman didn't agree and when the children grew up, he never talk to them. He never looked at them. Anytime they see the father coming, they run to their room. They never <laughs> sit together. So okay, uh, one of the additional things I can add is, uh, I believe for us to have a change, it has to start individually. So we need to get to the women and interact with them yeah. to know exactly what they want. What? Sometimes we don't do that because we always perceive we know what, what they, they want. want. Yeah. Without getting to interact with them personally. Yeah. And then we also have to stop uh, this issue of child marriage, forced marriage. Exactly. Because if the person is put in a coin, the person cannot, I mean, come out and develop something. That is when you cannot see the potential okay. of such a woman. Our law should also be, I mean, equal or shouldn't be biased. Yeah. We should also provide equal training and educational opportunities to yes. women and both men and women. Yeah. So that is my submission. I also think that in the workplace, the those in authority should ensure that the women are also going for promotion. Yeah, that's with, yeah, the, because the, most of the women they don't, and when they are, they do know they should go to them and ask them why are you not going for this promotion? Why don't you want to go forward in this you way? Need to because, be empowered yeah, also to also. I mean, move up the ladder. Yeah. So as we are bringing it to a close, what's your last words for the viewers out there? Well, I would want to admonish our cherished viewers that we are all unique. No matter who you are, a male or a female, God has created you in a unique way. So even when you are being disadvantaged, don't be discouraged. Look for that uniqueness in you, and you can still make it in life. And I also urge governments to always refer to the Gender Inequality Index that is always provided by the UNDP, so that you see how you are faring. There is a, how do you call, a criteria that they used to measure all this. Those index are there for us to refer to if you want to make way. And I want to congratulate the countries that are fighting, putting up laws to protect especially women. May God bless you. Thumbs up to you all. <laughs> okay, one thing I can say for sure, I always believe in is that change always starts individually. So okay. as persons, we need to be more objective or transparent. Sure. Let's not have this idea of this is how it has always been. Yeah. Men has always been doing this, women yeah. have always been this. Yeah. Because if we change the, our views from that angle, we'll be able to accept or tolerate other views and incorporate that into our cultural norms. Yeah. But I also want, I mean, ladies or women to understand that no matter how equal we are to men, there are certain things that are naturally our uh, job Benefits. or our roles to yeah. undertake. And also, Men and women both have the power or the ability to shape society. So they should be presented with equal opportunities. And also we shouldn't try to, I mean, undermine people. Just because the woman didn't do well or the man didn't do well doesn't mean this person is better than that. They should all be given the same equal empowerment and opportunities as well. I also think that it starts from the home because that is the first place a child gets to before he or she goes out. So in the house, parents, man, how are you treating your wife? Woman, how are you treating your husband? Because if the children are watching the parents, if they go out, the way the father treats the mother, that is how the boys are going to treat the girls in school, in the churches. So I think that they should educate their children. They should be role models for them to look up to. They should not reject a certain particular sex because maybe past experience or what you have been going through. I think that if we can accept one another and be with one another fairly, everything will go on well. Thank you very much, lovely viewers, for being with us from the beginning to the end. You can catch us on our media handles. Facebook is hashtag the daily trend. Instagram is also hashtag the daily trend. Thank you very much. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye.